Nora Naranjo Morse is a multimedia artist who lives a traditional life on a pueblo in New Mexico. Her work has appears on the grounds of the American Indian Museum in Washington, D.C., and is one of the most photographed exhibits there. You will really enjoy meeting Nora. Her light shines through on this video, her commitment to doing work that, ad that addresses societal ills like waste and greed is something that she thinks is the obligation of every artist to bring their perspective to their work in that regard. I hope that this video helps to spark your interest in artists in your community that are doing the same type of work. Enjoy. My name is Nora Naranjo Morse, and I come from New Mexico. I'm a mixed media artist, and uh, more specifically, I am a Tewa Pueblo Indian from northern New Mexico, from the Santa Clara Pueblo uh, tribe. I was always around art or, or some form of making, whether it was building a fireplace with adobe from my father, or watching my mother uh, make pottery. Uh, in the village that I come from, most of the people make a living out of um, making pottery. Historically, it was made for utilitarian or ceremonial purposes. And now people have started using it for commercial, uh, selling it for commercial reasons. So before that, there was this period of time during the 50s and 60s where um, no one was really interested in Indian art per se. Uh, there wasn't any height. It's, the interest in it seems to uh, fluctuate quite a bit. But at that period, when I was growing up, my mother was making it to cook her beans in and so it was more um, to utilitarian. The look on her face when she made pottery was something that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that impression stuck with me. Um, she has, we have uh, six sisters, I have six sisters and three brothers in, in my family, and all of us create in some form or the other. So I think that combination of this, this need to create and this connection that came from our culture to um, look around and see what is uh, our resources was really married and um, was instilled in us at a very, very early age. So I think I learned that from both my parents um, and when I went to school, I was a terrible student. And so uh, I was like the other Indian kids who didn't understand what was going on in the classroom, how the classroom was set up, and how we were being geared to think and learn and, and participate in this larger society. Because our community was so small, and what would happen is that we would get bused from this tiny little indigenous community into this uh, town and where the whole world was just uh, very different. So w most of the kids from the Pueblo didn't do very well uh, academically, and it was very discouraging for a lot of them. And what happened to me at that moment uh, was that I started drawing or uh, making things because that was a safe. That was something in my foundation that I understood to be secure, and that's something that I was good at. Even though I couldn't do math, I could uh, create something. And I think that was my anchor for the longest time all throughout my um, secondary education. So I think from there, I just realized that that's what I was compelled to do. Um, and I go back to the look on my mother's face after a long day of feeding people and taking care of all of these kids. She would sit by the fire uh, in the corner uh, of the house and she would just work the clay. And it was very peaceful and quiet. And I think that was what I kept going back to. In my community, 
everybody did uh, vessels. And everybody was so good at it, including the sister that reintroduced me to clay. They are masters. The walls are thin, and when you ping them, they just make the most beautiful sound. And they're so well made that when I was trying, it was very discouraging because I never thought that I could do anything like that. So for some reason, I started making these uh, awkward little forms. And um, that's where I started becoming more interested in the form, the human form, as opposed to the, the vessel. And uh, I think in, in some ways it was a way for me to individuate and become the person that I was looking to become. Mm -hmm. And I think there have been different stages in my trajectory uh, of emotional and uh, artistic growth th that have clued me into um, different directions that I should go. And they're very simple and they happen um, on an ordinary day. So, for example, um, I had just got through doing this huge project in Washington, D.C. at the Smithsonian Mall at the National Indian Museum. And the project at that point uh, was done. I had made five ephemeral pieces that are in the process of melting down. And um, it was very intense work. It took several years and uh, a lot of logistics, and I was drained. And so I came home, and I was wanting to find out what that next point in the trajectory was. And so I sat in my studio, and I thought, oh, I'm going to clean it out. And so I started gathering things that I didn't think I'd be using anymore, and I took it to our transfer station, our dump in Santa Clara. It's on the reservation. And interestingly enough, it's over the hill from, there's a dump, and then over the hill is uh, where our sacred clay pit is. And when I realized the, 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 the distance and the closeness and the symbol of all of this, um, the, the visual juxtaposition itself was pretty uh, inspiring on some level to me. Uh, was, I was horrified, <laughs> but I was also very inspired because I thought, this is amazing. What, how, as a contemporary Native person, how do I deal with this? Mm. And the trash mounds, uh, at the transfer station are huge, and sometimes they burn them, and uh, the waste, plastic, whatever is thrown away, uh, is just burned, and it goes up into the air, of course. So I started realizing that we as human beings no longer take the time to understand what we're creating how we're using it, and where we're discarding it. And we're doing it with such reckless abandon. And so that became one of those moments. On a, I think it was a Monday morning at 10 o'clock. It was just an ordinary day. And it hit me like a bolt of lightning so that I wanted to understand what was happening in our little community. And it was a little, it was impressed impressive to me because uh, traditionally Pueblo people had this whole way of looking at what they discarded. Very, very little was discarded because they didn't have much. If you um, butchered a, an elk, you used every single part of it. If someone gave you something, you took care of it and you used it until um, a, a piece of cloth. You used it until it was a rag. So there was this, there's this big difference going on now between what we did with um, things traditionally and what we're doing with them now. 
um, even pottery when they were no longer usable for um, utilitarian purposes. They were put in a corner and they were allowed to melt back into the ground. And actually that was probably the the basic idea for the large ephemeral pieces in um, Washington, D.C., is that you always took care of this earth somehow, some way. You used it, but you also were very um, respectful of it. And so when it was, um, like in the case of the pottery, if you no longer used it, then you put it aside and it just melted back. And again, it was then, I guess, reconstituted at some later point. Um, uh, so th the decisions of having a dump and then very close to the clay pit, I don't know who made that decision, but that was intriguing enough for me to build um, a whole exhibit from that. So what I would ended up doing was going back to the dump every week or so and just looking around at what people discarded and uh, picking it up, bringing it home, washing it off. And uh, I started making things, uh, sculptures out of wire and uh, plastic things. Um, thread that was thrown away, yarn that was thrown away. Um, whatever was interesting to me, I would gather. And I started building these um, large sculptures with these old planters, you know, tomato planters. And I started stacking them on top of one another. And, and then with the yarn and the old tape I found, I started wrapping these planters. And um, they were very kinetic. They were just so wonderfully kinetic because I made, I think I made about f five, four or five of them. And when you touched them or when the, the wind uh, came through the, uh, the windows and, and hit these sculptures, they would just move in such a beautiful way. And sometimes if I was lucky, they'd all move together. And then if there was a big gust of wind, they'd just fall over. And I thought, wait a minute, I have to figure out how to keep them stable. And then I remembered the clay pit. And so um, I started making these stabilizers out of clay. And that's very important to, for me to emphasize, they had become stabilizers. They were my anchors for these pieces. So I put them on the bottom of each of these pieces, and then it was like magic because I realized, oh, I'm gathering these resources like we did traditionally and used everything we possibly could to to make things, to build things, uh, to create things. And it was one of those defining moments for me that uh, was like a signpost. This is what you should be doing. So I continue to do that at this point. Um, we are going to be there from August to the end of September. And our, our particular uh, exhibition is called Nonuments, as opposed to all the monuments in DC. Um, and what we've been asked, and in this case, the Nonuments has five artists. And um, I should say that the reason why it's called Five by Five is because there are five curators who select five uh, artists or artist teams. So in this case, uh, I'm one of the artists, my daughter and I uh, are in a team together, um, and she's a, the, the other artist, our, our niece Rose Simpson was unable to do it. Um, and so what we'll be doing in this open lot in a uh, community that has both uh, lower middle class working people uh, and 
sort of the, the hip young people in, in the community that have jobs in, in, in the government. Um, it's, the whole area has become sort of gentrified, which is really interesting to me because I've never seen this before, where close to the road there are all these nice high rises and, and, and stores and Starbucks. And in the back there are um, the housing projects. In the center of all of this, there are two open lots, and that's where monuments, our exhibit, will be, um, will be held. Our particular uh, project is called Work. And every day, my daughter and I and other volunteers will come to this open lot dressed uh, in different attire. Uh, one day we'll be uh, doctors, the next day we'll be businessmen. We'll just assume the working class. Um, the, we'll represent a cross-section of the working class. And we'll dig uh, the earth, make mounds, uh, create channels. Uh, again, the whole idea is the process. And we'll be there during uh, peak traffic time. And so that people get a good look at us. And uh, as I'm recalling the site now, uh, there are large office buildings where people can look down and see what we're doing. And I think there'll be a lot of interest. And as I was telling you, I'm especially happy that um, this is happening in Washington, DC. Maybe I am particularly sensitive to um, the disregard to minority the disregard to uh, working poor. Um, and I think this is going to make a perfect statement about um, bringing issue to that. And in a very understated, um, very curious way that I think people will um, find interesting and they'll hopefully ask questions. Uh, we went to a site visit not long ago and this was in DC, and the interest level was pretty high by other artists and other community members. So I think this is the kind of thing that appeals to people because we're at a place right now where we're all trying to decide, okay, how does one person make a difference? How do I make uh, a difference um, sitting in this little studio, wrapping trash up on trash and trying to say something about how frustrated I feel that my own people are throwing tons and tons and tons of trash away without real consideration about what this means in the future. Um, same way with the human beings. How do we, how do we justify that we are um, disregarding the needs of people like us? everywhere. This is n not just a native issue, it's, a, it's really, it's a human issue. And so I think being at this place will really, uh, surrounded by so many people, will really give us uh, the time to really express this um, opinion we'll really be able to um, feel like we're making some kind of difference, if nothing else, than just to make um, the simple statement of what, how are we treating each other? Um, how are our basic needs being taken care of? Um, why do we work so hard and not be able to get anywhere? Why is... Um, um, there, why are they, why is there such an inequity among people? And so, um, I don't know, but I really think that artists have a unique uh, responsibility to um, look at things differently and processing uh, very differently. And then through that processing, there's an articulation, whether it's tangible, whether it's a performance installation like we're doing in Washington, D.C., um, to, to look at things in a creative way that may have some really interesting answers. Now, I don't know, I'm getting back to the, um, the, the recycling um, trash art I've been doing. I don't know if 
this art that I've been doing and have been so passionate about really makes a dent in people's consciousness because I did invite people from my tribe to um, the exhibition and one person showed up. But I think he got it. And I think if it's just one person even, then I think that's great. My daughter is also very passionate about um, what we do with our um, what we do with our discards, and I think she's actually doing um, carrying it on in a different direction, and I think that's a tradition that should be um, really recognized. Is that uh, when you feel responsible? and you feel committed, then you model that to another generation. And they then take it up when you have done as much as you could or you continue to do it and you work together. And that's why working with my daughter in DC is such a, a joy and a celebration because we are working together to make something happen.